in the, gospel, in the book of um, Genesis, the first book in the Bible, chapter 5, just a few first pages away from you know, the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, we find God has a relationship with someone here. I want you to look at me, Genesis chapter 5, and we are looking at verses 21 to 24. We are focusing on 24. It says in 24, in 21, uh, where is it? And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred sixty and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Very interesting. Very interesting, and it's very important for us to understand this. What do we find here? It says that twice in verse 21, no, I'm sorry, in verse 22, and in verse 24, it says, and Enoch, what? Walked with God. And that word walk here doesn't mean just taking footsteps one in front of the other. What it means is to have a relationship with. Enoch had a relationship with God. Enoch was faithful to God. Enoch lived in fellowship with God. He had a personal relationship with God. So when the, scribe, the, the writer here, this is Moses writing the book of Genesis, writes here and he puts that Enoch walked with God, he's talking about having a relationship with God. Enoch had a relational, personal relationship with God. Okay? And that's what God wants us to do in this present time. Have a personal relationship with him. We, we, we live in, in times when we, we look around and we, we find that we get in relationships with people. Okay? And none of these relationships really mean a lot, get to any fulfillment eventually because they are not meant to last. But God wants to have a lasting relationship with us. God wants to have an eternal relationship with us. God wants to have something intimate, personal, where we can connect with him. So we have to learn how to walk. As Paul would say in the New Testament, let your conversation, the word conversation means your walk and your talk. Let your walk, as we say in the modern time, let your walk match your talk. Amen? So we find here it says, and Enoch walked with God. Okay, in verse, in verse um, 24, it says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. That's important to understand. Enoch's relationship with God was so close, so connected, that you know, the, the, the old preachers used to say, they used this analogy to, to sort of give us an understanding of this. They said that Enoch and God were walking and talking, and eventually it got to a point where they had walked and talked for so long that God looked at the time. Well, God is only time, but they say God looked at time and see what's getting dark. And he said, you know, you know what? My home is closer than right now than your home. So let's go home to my home. And he never came back. So that's just an illustration that you know preachers use. But what is talking about here is that. Enoch's walk with God was so good. His relationship with God was so strong that it says here, he walked with God and this is, and he was not. There's no record that he died. So where did he go? God took him. God took him. Look at what it says here. Okay? God took him to be home with him. When your relationship with God is so strong, when your relationship with God is so connected, God will take you through situations and bring you out on the other side better than what you are in right now. When your relationship with God is that close, that connected, God will allow you to go through situations. Because you see, in this world, this world that we live in, this world is full of trouble. This world is full of tribulation. This world is full of misery and strife. This world is full of stuff that we, we, we get overwhelmed with. But if your relationship with God is intact, 
Regardless of how bad things seem to happen in the world, God wants you to know that he is still with you and he will always be for you. When we develop a personal relationship with God, miraculous things happen in our lives because God wants us to what? Know him. God wants us to know him. Let's look at something Jesus said here in the Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew, and we are going to look at Matthew chapter 11, and I want you to look at verse 29. Okay? Matthew chapter 11 and verse 29. Jesus made this statement, and, 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 and as I'm saying this, I want you to be able to get the whole picture, a backdrop of what's going on here. God wants us to know him. A lot of people know God's words. They know the words of the Bible. They memorize it, you know. They, they have it all down, you know. Book, chapter, verse. They can tell you everything about it. But they are not in a relationship with God. So Jesus made a statement here. In Matthew chapter 11 and verse 29. He said, take my yoke upon you. Or come and share my burden. And learn of me. Or learn from me. Here in the Greek it says, you know, it's translated English from the Greek. It says, of, but it means learn from me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Here's what he wants us to do. To learn of him. To learn of him. To know more about him. What does that phrase mean? It means to increase one's knowledge of. To learn of him means to increase one's knowledge of him. Not just to know the words on the pages, but to know the God of the word. We, we, we have to understand and identify with God, understand him. You see, when we get into a personal relationship with God, and God begins to do things in our lives, we find that our faith increases, because that's what God wants from us. He wants our faith to increase. He wants us to be in a position where we constantly come to him regardless of what's going on in our lives. That we will humble ourselves, we will call on, we will submit to him because he is God and he is all powerful. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. God wants a relationship with us. He wants a relationship with us. He wants us to know that he cares enough. And he demonstrated it. As John wrote it in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have what? Eternal life. Eternal life with him. He sent Jesus into the world to redeem the world from its sins so that when everyone who believe that Jesus is the Son of God and has paid a sin penalty for their sins, they can live eternally with Him. You see, Enoch was not the only person in the Bible who walked with God. In Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9, the same, same, same book, Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9, we will find that it says here, God saw something Happening on the earth. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9. It says here. It, it gives us here. An, 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 an introduction to a particular man. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just and perfect. Noah was just and perfect. In his generations. And Noah walked with God. Same Hebrew word. Translated meaning. To live in fellowship with. Have a personal relationship with or be faithful to. Noah walked with God. And we can tell the evidence is there how God used Noah to be the father of the new generations. Because when Adam sinned and all the others came along, we find that Enoch is taken out of the group of all of these generations we read here. Um, in, 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 you know, from, from chapter 3 all the way up to chapter 6, we find all of these, of them all, the only person that is called out there is Enoch, and now we find Noah. God chose them. Why? Because Noah realized that God is real. 
All the people around him were worshipping pagan gods. They were all doing their own thing. They were, they were all caught up in immorality and corruption and everything else. But Noah kept a faithful relationship with God. He walked circumspectly with God. And as he walked circumspectly with God, God chose him to be the father of the new generation of people that he would bring on the earth. Because remember, he destroyed everybody else, except Noah and his family. He destroyed everybody else. So God gave us what? A reset. So we can start again and come back to in, into a relationship with him. He saw Noah as that person who could have that relationship with him. That's what God wants. God wants us to know him, not just to know about him. Okay? When we develop a personal relationship with God, he will withhold no good thing from us, my brothers and sisters. When we develop a personal relationship with God, he will withhold no good thing from us. In, in, in Psalm 84 and 11, it tells us, For God, the Lord God, is a sun and shield. He's a protector. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that what? Walk uprightly or walk in righteousness. Walk in a way that represents him here on the earth. He will withhold no good, withhold no good thing from us. We will be people when we understand our relationship with God, we realize that we can always be in a state of being blessed. It doesn't mean that we will not have tribulations and trials. It doesn't mean that things will not come and upset us or anything of the sort, but you have to keep your focus on God. You have to keep your mindset on God. You have to be faithful to God because God is ever faithful to us. So you will withhold no good thing from those who walk what? Uprightly. He wants to be in a relationship with us. My brothers and sisters, God was constantly speaking to his people by signs and wonders and through the prophets. He was always doing miraculous things. Always doing miraculous things. You know, um, the Sunday school lesson this morning is out of the book of Judges. And it talked about Gideon. God called him out because the Midianites came against the children of Israel. And if you go back and you read the whole book of the book of Judges, what is it all about? It's about the children of Israel brought into the promised land. They, 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 they serve God, but then they start to look at the nations around them. They start to worship the gods of the nations around them who did not give them victory over the children of Israel. They eventually lost their position. Now they are under the bondage of the people of the nations that they have once conquered. And they're not submitting to their gods. And then they cry out to God. And God come and save them because he will send a deliverer. Gideon is one of those deliverers. And we find that when we understand that God is trying to get us to develop a relationship with him. And remain in a relationship with him. We will find that things will continue to be better doesn't mean that there won't be any situations or any adversity because while we're in the earth, we have an enemy of our souls who will keep on trying to get us to turn our backs on God. But that is what happened today in the book of Judges. They have a relationship with God. Oops, they start looking at the world. Boom. They get in bondage. They call on God. God saved them. They, they feel comfortable. They look at the world. They, they get in bondage to the world. God, they call on God, God saved them. And it goes over and over and over and over. And if we check out our own lives, we find that that's the way it is in many cases. We up and down and up and down and up and down in our relationship with God. And God is saying, I want a permanent relationship. I don't want to be a part-time God. I don't want to be a part-time God. No, I don't want to be a part-time God. I want to be your God. Listen to this. When we look at the prophets, and we look in, in, in the Old Testament, and we look at what they call the major prophets and the minor prophets, you will come across these type of statements. Mm -hmm. And the word of the Lord came to, or thus say the Lord, you know, all of the different books you would read, you know, you, you find them in Isaiah, in Jeremiah, in, 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 um, in Hosea, you find them in Habakkuk, you find them in that, in, 
when you go to God is speaking, he's constantly speaking because he wants his children to relate to him. He wants us to be in a personal relationship with him. God wants us to connect with him because he loves us. You see, the thing about it is that when you love a person, you always try to connect with a person. You're always doing things for the person. So you keep on finding that the relationship will grow and will foster. Why? Because you're connected to. God wants us to be in a relationship with him. He's a superior power. It's like, you know, I have a power outlet behind me here. And that power outlet by itself is, is, is just there. But if I have a lamp or something that I need to use, a vacuum cleaner or something, and I plug it in there, there is power flowing. Once it's not disconnected, it's useless. But once it's connected, the power comes on. You turn on the switch and boom, you can use whatever you want to use. But here's the thing about it. In the switch, in that connection there, in that outlet there, the power is there already. The power is there already. It's just under God. The power of God is there. The love of God is there. The care and the concern and the provision of God is right there. He just needs you to connect with him. So you can draw out of. So, when we look at it now, God is always speaking. Because he wants to have a personal relationship with us. He wants us to know him. Like I've said before, a lot of people know the word of God, but they don't know the God of the word. And that makes a big difference. That makes a big difference. You have to know him. You have to know him. Let me show you this. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, most of us know that. You would see, but I prefer the Martian, I know where you're going. Yes. Jeremiah, chapter 29, verses 11 to 13. I want you to see this now, because a lot of people love chapter, um, verse 11. For I know the thoughts I think toward you, say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Here's what God is saying. I have plans for you and I know what they are because I know you. And these plans that I have for you are to give you peace and not evil and to bring you to an expected end. Okay? To bring you to an expected end. To bring you to the place where I plan for you to be. Not our expected end, but his expected end. Let me read it again so you can understand how it balances. For I know the thoughts I think towards you. Say the law. That's what God is saying. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To do what? To give you. To give you. He has plans for you to give you or take you to an expected end. What he has planned for you. What he has purpose for you. God wants you to know he has plans for you. But he wants you to know that you, in the midst of it, you can have peace, not evil. Even though evil will come against you, the weapon will be formed against you. But God is saying, because I want to get you to an expected end. What is God's end plan for us? What is God's um, um, next step for us in our relationship with him? Eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Eternal life. God doesn't want us to have just a temporary relationship. You know, a lot of people in the world are doing hookups, one night stands. And God is saying, I don't want no hookup, man. I don't want no night, one night stand. I want a permanent relationship. You need to make me the epitome of your love. Your focus on everything else needs to be on me. So let's look at this and see now. Let's look at the rest of this and see. Verse 12. Then shall you call upon me. When you know God, you're going to call on him, right? And he shall go and pray unto me. And here's what we say. So here's what we say. Because you know me, then you shall call upon me. And then what do you do? You shall go and pray unto me. He said, I, I will hearken unto you. In other words, when we have a personal relationship with God, God will hear our prayers. God will hear our prayers. How many of you have a cell phone and you have numbers that you've blocked? Or people that you've blocked? You don't want to hear from them anymore. Because, you, you know, whatever it is, you don't have a relationship with them anymore. You disconnect with them. You don't want to have any communication with them anymore. God is saying, when we know who I am, and you have a personal relationship with me, when you call on me, I will always answer. There's no block phone numbers with God. 
There's no black numbers with God. Here's the thing. The people who have a personal relationship with God always have access to God. Everybody who has a personal relationship with God always has access, access to God. Verse 13. And you shall seek me. Why you don't seek him? Because you know him. Because you know what he's capable of doing. You know that in your midnight hour, when things are happening, you and you have nobody else you can call. Who are you going to call? You're going to call God. When the, the, the times look dark and dim and dismal and depression and oppression seem to be coming upon you, who are you going to call? You can call the pastor, you can call the preacher, you can call the evangelist, you can call a lot of people, you can call your best friend and everybody else. But do they have the answer to your questions? They might give you some advice, but do they have the solution to your problem? No, God does. So God is saying, and you shall seek me and find me. Ah. But Lord, I'm going to seek you and find you. He said, yes, when you search for me with what? All of your heart. All of your heart. God wants a personal relationship, but he wants all of your heart. He doesn't want a part of your heart. He wants us to be in a position where we offer him first, just like um, Abel did. He, we give God the best, and he kept the rest. We give God the best of who we are, and God will take care of the rest. Of what is needed in our lives. God wants to be in that personal relationship. God wants to be able to do it my brothers and sisters. Because he loves us. He loves us. Hallelujah. All of this is said. To bring us into a, a relationship with God. God is saying this. Through Jeremiah the prophet. Just like he spoke to, 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 to Moses. Huh? Just like he spoke to Jesus. God is telling us all of these things because God wants a relationship with us. You see, many people are going around the world in, in, in life, you know, and they, 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 they're talking Christian talk. They're acting like Christians, but they are living in the shadow lands because they don't have a relationship with God. Remember, like I mentioned last week, and it was written there in the book in, in the New Testament, the seven sons of Sceva. They were using the name of Jesus, trying to cast out demons. <laughs> huh? And what did the demons say to them? Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. But who are you? If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, if you don't have a relationship with God the Father, my brothers and sisters, you live in a life of schisms, pretense. God wants us to have a personal relationship with Him. In the Gospel of John, in John chapter 15, in the first 10 uh, verses of that chapter, Jesus uses a word, abide. That word abide here means to dwell with, to tabernacle with, to live with, to be in an, a relationship with. He used it nine times in ten verses. Okay? All right. What does that mean? To abide, in, it means to be in a personal relationship with. In other words, it's an invitation to what? To connect with God in a personal relationship. It's an invitation to connect with God in a personal relationship. God does not want to be like the gods that other people worship. Mohammed. No personal relationship. Krishna. No personal relationship. Shiva. No personal relationship. God is looking for a personal relationship. And in most of these others, if not all of these other religions, they have thousands of and thousands of gods. So these people don't know who's, which God they really need to submit to, which one they need to bow to, which one they need to sacrifice to. On every given day, they have to have a list. They have to have a list to be able to go through to, to, to help them to understand which God. We have one God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah? God Listen to that. Let's look at John chapter 5, chapter 5 and verse 10. 
This is relationship. This is relationship. John chapter 5 and verse 10. John chapter 5 and verse 10. What does it say? John chapter 5 and verse 10. If you keep my commandments, in other words, if you're obedient to me, if you are obedient to me, all right? John 15, sorry. I said 5, right? John 15. John 15, sorry. John 15, sorry. In John 15, verse, the first 10 verse, he uses the word abide nine times. John 15 and verse 10. If you keep my commandments, or you will be obedient to me, you shall abide in my love, dwell in my love, or be connected to my love, even as I kept my Father's commandments, or was obedient to my Father, and abide in his love. Jesus said, as I did with my Father, I want you to do it with me. When you connect with me, when you abide with me, when you tabernacle with me, when you have a personal relationship with me, you are having a personal relationship with the Father because I and the Father are one. It's always about personal relationship. God wants us to have a personal relationship with Him. He wants us to know Him, not just know about Him. You see, that's the reason why a lot of people are having problems in their lives, my brothers and sisters. Because people don't really know God. There are two things, two things I've discovered along the way the Holy Spirit revealed to me. One, people don't really know the Word of God. And I'll be real and honest with you. I know it's a hard statement to make. But a lot of people don't really know the Word of God. Honestly speaking. They know the Word, but they don't really know what it means. That's why I take my time to help you to understand the difference between the, uh, what the word means in the Hebrew and the Greek. So you can have an understanding. I try to, to bring it to a level where you can understand its context. Okay? Because God wants, is looking for a relationship. It doesn't make sense to just know a bunch of words out of the Bible, but don't know what it means and how it relates back to the one who gave it. As we seek to know God, there are so many examples available to us that we, should un be, that we should understand how rewarding it is to be in that kind of relationship. As we seek to know God, it is important uh -huh, and rewarding to know how rewarding it is to be in that kind of relationship with God. Abraham had a relationship with God. God came to Abraham and he spoke to Abraham. And he told him, he said, you know, they, they develop a relationship. And after a while, Abraham said, okay, God is God. He is God. I believe in him. I, I can see it, how he moves. I, I understand how he, how he acts and, and so on. He said, I'm going to ask God for my big favor. Then he went and asked God for a son. He said, the only person I have to inherit all that I have is this Ethiopian. So, what, what do you want me to do? I, I, need, I need somebody, to, I need to have a son to pass on my inheritance to. God heard it. God answered him, and he gave him Isaac. When you're in a relationship with God, you find Jesus. <laughs> let, me, let me see, let me see. Am I still there? Jesus said, in, in the same chapter, okay, of John, the Gospel of John, I'm back in the Gospel of John, John chapter 15, Jesus made a statement. He said, if you abide in me, and my words, not just what's in the page here, but the words of it being hidden in your heart, abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. If you abide and dwell in, if you are in a relationship with me based on what I've said in my word, look what he says now. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you've taken his word to heart, you believe his word, you trust his word, because he is God, he is faithful to his word. He said, You shall act what you will, and it shall be done unto you. And the reason why a lot of people are going through the stuff that they're going through is because, one, they don't really believe this. I'm serious. They don't believe the word of God. This word does not abide in them. This word does not dwell in them. This word does not continue in them. 
They, they have not taken it and, and, and made it their own in their relationship. It's a, a love letter to every one of us here on the earth. So when you have a Bible, it's not just a book. It's a manual for life. It's a love letter from God to help you to know Him. It tells us about Him. It teaches us about Him. But we have to take that knowledge and now put it into practice. Put it into practice. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I remember I used to, I was an assistant soccer coach at a high school down in Fort Lauderdale. And uh, while I was there, um, before I became a soccer coach, I used to, because I grew up playing soccer, I used to go and watch the guys when they're practicing and so on. So, one, of the, one day I was there and I was talking with the coach. And in the conversation with the coach, I, I didn't realize that the coach was coaching the players based on a, a book that he had read about playing soccer. And the coach himself never really played soccer. So he was trying to, to, to transfer what he learned from the book into the players, and some of them have played more soccer than he ever played in his own life. So he learned a lot of words, but he had no application. And God is looking for us to take the word and apply it to our life so that we can now have a relationship with him. And it will become something that will grow to become better in our relationship because he wants it to be personal. God is not looking for some sort of, you know, I am God in heaven and I, and I am the, the surveyor of all that I have made and I look down from heaven and I, 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 no, no, God wants to be in a relationship with. God wants to be in a relationship with. God wants to be able to hear our prayers, our cries, understand us. God wants to be able to wrap his arms around us. God wants to be able to touch us. God wants to speak to us. God wants to be able to work things out on our behalf. Because he's God, he wants it to be personal. He wants us to relate to him. When you have great confidence in God, he shows up at the right time. When you have a personal relationship with God, he shows up at the right time. You know, there's a song says, what? He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is an on-time God. He may not come when you want it, but he's always on time. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's an on-time God. God doesn't exist in time. We exist in time. So while we are looking at the, the hours and the minutes and, and, and the seconds and so on, God is moving. He's working on behalf. On our behalf. And when he comes, it's the right time. Always the right time. Always the right time. When Shadrach, Mishael, and Abednego had a personal relationship with God, and the king said he was going to throw them in the fiery furnace, did they sweat? No, they didn't. Why? Because they trusted God. What happened? He showed up in the fiery furnace. When Daniel, my brothers and sisters, was threatened to be thrown into the lion's den, did he sweat? Did he plead? Did he, oh, King, don't do that to me. Oh, I will serve you. No, he didn't. He kept his relationship with God. And we've got to understand that trials will come, trials will go, situations will crop up all the time, my brothers and sisters. The devil is a busy person. He is out there to kill, steal, and destroy. He's going to keep on coming, keep on coming, keep on coming, because he wants your soul. And if you don't realize that by now, it is about time that you recognize that the devil is on your track. But what do you do? If a, a personal relationship with God, because he'll be a shield, he'll be a buckler, he'll be a hiding place, he'll be a press, ever present help in the time of trouble. But that's the kind of God we serve. Mm -hmm. The same way he did things for all the saints of the old, those in the Old Testament and even those in the New Testament. Could you imagine Stephen being stoned to death? And it says that he looked up into heaven and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he asked God to forgive those who stole him. He didn't lose focus. 
He didn't lose his focus. He looked up to heaven and he saw Jesus because his focus was Jesus. He had a personal relationship with Jesus. He died a physical death, but he was translated into heaven because he had a personal relationship with Jesus. He didn't die in vain. And God will do the same for you. But he wants you to know him or to have a personal relationship with him. So let's see what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ had to say about the wayward people. What our Lord had to say about the wayward people. Hmm? Not Jesus, but the Lord in the Old Testament. What, is, what does he have to say about the wayward people? In Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 24, my brothers and sisters, Jeremiah chapter 24, Jesus spoke. Not Jesus, but the Lord spoke, it says here. It says here, the Lord spoke. And we know the Lord really means Jesus. But we are taking it from the, old, from the Old Testament to Jeremiah chapter 26. Here he speaks in verse 6 and 7. Jeremiah 26 verse 6 and 7. Okay. Let's see. Je Jeremiah 24. I said 26. Sorry. Jeremiah 24. Jeremiah 24 verse 6 and 7. When God looks down and he sees us as we are, in our wayward state, when we act like if there is no God and we, we are gods and our, our own and we want to do our own thing, what do we see here? God is speaking to Jeremiah to speak to the people. He said, For I set my eyes, my eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them and not pull them down, I will plant them and not pluck them up. That's what God is telling Jeremiah to tell the people. And verse 7, and I will give them a heart to know me. Do you understand that? That I am the Lord and they shall be my people and I will be their God. For they shall return unto me with their what? Whole heart. There it is. There it is. He's telling Jeremiah to tell the people just like I'm telling you now, reading it out of the scripture, he says what? I will set my eyes upon them for good. Huh? Plans for good and not for evil. He said, I will set my eyes upon them, my eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land. I will bring, this is my plan for them. Yes, I know they were in captivity for 70 years, but I'm going to bring them back to this land. And I'm going to bless this land. I'm going to increase this land. I'm going to make them a name to be known again. Look at what he says now. And I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them. Cause them to increase. And I will not, and not pull them down. I will plant them, establish them there. And not pluck them up. And even though we know after Jesus died and the fall of, of, of um, Israel in 70 AD, when the Roman Empire came and plundered Israel and the people scattered all over the place, Israel has been reborn again as a nation mm -hmm. and God has planted them there and that will be their home forever until Jesus comes back and put his foot on, 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 in, in Israel and rule and reign from Israel. It will be there, he said, I will plant them and not pluck them up. Look at the seven now, that's very important. The seven, that's where we're going. And I will give them a heart to what? To know me. I will give them a heart to know me. And that's what God is saying to you right now. As he spoke to me and told me, my people don't know me. They need to know me. And my brothers and sisters, if you are willing and ready, God is willing to give you a heart to know him. Because God knows you. God knows you. And God knows what you need. And God wants to supply your needs. And God wants you to experience his love because God wants to have a personal relationship with you. He said, I will give them a heart to know me. To know me. God wants us to know him. Not just to know about him, but to know him. He said, when that happens, I'll give them a heart to know me that I am the Lord, that he is the Lord. And, and if you are, your Bible should have L-O-R-D in capital letters, that I am Elohim, I'm El Shaddai, I'm Yahweh. Mm -hmm. 
I'm Jehovah God, I'm just not a God. I want you to know me because I am God. I am the Lord. Here's what he says next. And they shall be my people. When we know God, we shall be his people. When we have a personal relationship with him, we shall be his people. When we become intimate in our, our connection with him, we shall be his people. He said, I will be their God. They will know me and I will know them and I will be their God. For they shall return unto me with what? Their whole heart. When you turn to God with your whole heart, my brothers and sisters, you find that you will be in a personal relationship with you, with God. Because God, that's what God desires. That's what God desires. When you're going to read the, old, the, the New Testament and you read the Gospels, you hear Jesus always talking about the Father, the Father, the Father, the Father, the Father, the Father. He's always talking about the Father. In the prayer that he gave to us to pray, when the disciples say, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples to pray. John then gave them anything about the Father, but Jesus said, when thou prayest, pray our Father relationship. The father is looking for his children to come back to him so that he can be their God. He can be their Lord. He wants to be their father. And I don't want you today, my brothers and sisters, but it's about time for us to stop playing church and stop just knowing the word and start knowing the God of the word. It is time for us to be able to get into a personal relationship with God so that God can do the things that he wants to do in our lives. The things he has planned and purpose for us. It is high time for us to recognize that we are just living on the skin of things, on the edges, the fringes of things, when God wants us right in the middle of it so he can use us miraculously. Listen to me. The Hebrew boys in the fire caused Nebuchadnezzar to pay attention and call God, God. Uh, Daniel in the lion then he called God um, in the Darius and Cyrus and they to know God because when they realized that his faith was in not in a man but in the true and living God they had to declare that the God that Daniel believed in the God that Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego believed in is the true God and God wants to use you in the same way my brothers and sisters God wants to use in the same manner. God wants to pour into you some of him to make a difference in the lives of those around you. But you've got to be connected to him. Like I said, that outlet in the wall. You've got to be connected to the power source. You have to be intimate with, connected to, in a relationship. So the power that's in God, the love that's in God, and all of the things that are new to that in God, all of the things that you the fruit of the Spirit will flow from God into you and into others around you. God wants a personal relationship with you. Are you ready for that today? Are you ready for that today? I, I'm asking the question because some of you might be out there saying, I'm all right. I'm fine just the way I am. But it's not enough to be in your relationship with God. Because like last week when we dealt with it, we talked about the fact that Jesus said, in, in all you speaking, he said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I knew you, I never knew you. And people said, but Lord, did we cross your demons your name? Did we prophesy in your name? Did we do this and do that? And then people said, but Lord, we did all of that stuff in your name. And he said, but I never knew you. That would be a sad commentary to be written on the epitaph of your life. That Jesus never knew you. God wants a personal relationship. He wants us to know him. Because when we know God, the reality of his word becomes alive in us. It's not just words anymore, but it becomes life in us. His word will be life in us. We will be living epistles. So when we speak and we talk to people, we can speak the word of God in truth and in righteousness. We can put them in a position where they have now to analyze the difference between the lifestyle of evil and the lifestyle of good. But we can change makers on behalf of God. So I know some of you are asking, oh, Reverend Marshall, what do I do? What do I do, Reverend Marshall? What do I do today, Reverend Marshall? Well, the first thing that you've got to do, my brothers and sisters, is to submit yourself to God. Well, how do I do that? You have to give your life to Jesus Christ. You have to give your life to Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters, because he is God. And Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10 tells us 
that if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you shall be saved. So let's pray. Let us pray, my brothers and sisters, let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Sins of omission and sins of commission. The known and the unknown. And I ask you, Lord God, to wash me in the blood of the Lamb. Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. For I've heard in your word, from your word, and I've read it for myself, that if I will confess Jesus as my Lord, and if I will believe in my heart that you, God, raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. And Lord, I want to be saved. I want to be real in my relationship with you. I want, Lord God, Father, to hear you say, well done, when you look at me in the last day. When you look at the roll, you see my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you'll say, welcome into my rest. And I will be able to spend my eternity with you because you're my God. And I am your child. I thank you for hearing my prayers. Take me and use me for your glory. I pray now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. My brothers and sisters, I pray that this message did something for you give you a bit of an understanding of why you need to have a relationship with God. Because God wants to have a relationship with you. Why you need to be knowing God, the God of the Word, and not just know the Word of God. God loves us all. And God wants us to be in fellowship and relationship with Him forever. Eternally, I praise you and I thank you for joining us. Press the share button, share this message with others so that they will get a chance to know, to hear, to understand, and accept and believe the word of God. May God bless you. And remember, you can join us always on YouTube. This message will be posted around 7 o'clock tonight on YouTube. My brothers and sisters, Hayden C. Marshall Ministries. That's where you'll find this message and other messages, last week's message and other messages from before. You'll also find some Bible study messages and um, lessons that you can tune in from the book of Psalms. May God bless you. May God bless you, my brothers and sisters. May God bless you. Have a great day. Amen. Amen.